Real quick, you guys, can you guys hear me okay with that mic? No. Yes. Okay, so I don't really need to use it because I don't like using mic. Okay, cool. When do you need a mic? Like I did last year. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody that's here. Um, I appreciate your guys' interest and in what I'm about to discuss. So thank you. Woo! Uh, there's more people here than last year. That's a huge thing. Um, those of you that were here last year, welcome back. Those of you that are brand new, again, thanks for coming in. Um, this panel is going to be is going to cover the uh, topic of equipment and what we use for sliding. Um, for me, I've gotten a ton of questions about that over the years. I, I've lost count. So, but uh, just a quick introduction. Um, my name is Scott Biederman. I run this little company called Slider Dynamics. Uh, I'm a 35 plus year veteran of the industry, and I've been teaching people since I was 18. I'm 51 now, so I'm old as dirt. I use that as an example because that shows that people that no matter how old you get, you can still do this if you want to. Um, also, I have a couple of members from the Kiel Alliance team, which the roots are right here off the boat, Queen Mary. Uh, they're going to be speaking to and explaining why they use the gear they use and why it works for them. That way it gives you guys an insight on, hey, you know what? They're using it, maybe we can. It's not just coming from, from me, of course, not from me. Make sense? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cover is the number one, number one part of the pads. There's two brands out there that people really use. Smith's Gabs and 187 Killer Pads. And I think most of you guys have heard of those brands, right? That have known them sliding in any type of way, right? Um, I, I'll show you guys the Smith Pad first. The reason why we use these pads is because the skate pad, it's got a lot of cushion in it. Because those of you that have slid before, even if you were just trying it, you understand how much pain you go through if you don't do it right, right? This alleviates that, okay? Um, this is the Smith Scab Elite One Pad. As you can see, it's, this is kind of beat up. This pad's like 20 years old, but I'm still using it. Um, as you can see, it's got a power strap on top. It really helps to secure the, uh, the top of the leg and on the bottom too. And it's got these big ass dog ears on the back. But this, besides that, the most important thing is this part right here. You see the recap? Yes. Comes off. Okay. Not every company has a uh, under recap, this is what I did decide to use because I've slid through a cap before onto the pad. Don't want that to happen like when you're mid-run, right? You slide into something and all of a sudden you hang up and you do a face plant. Not cool. Um, these can be bought separately as well. And it's, most of these come with double stick tape. Some companies use Velcro, but if you go to Home Depot and get like two inch wide industrial stick Velcro, you just put a piece here and a piece there. It's not going anywhere. The more you slide, the more it sticks. Yeah, it came off easy, but that's because I haven't slid on it today. You know, but once you slide, it's like pulling two pieces of, I don't know what, for it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, this is the uh, other brand, 187. This is the Pro Knee Pad. Okay, a lot of people use the Slim or the Derby Pad. We recommend the Pro Pad because it's got more stability and comfort. You know, it's a, it's a little bit bulky, but this is what is gonna save your knees, I guarantee it, just like the, the Smith gun. This also has a removable cap. The difference between them is they don't have an under cap, but they do have Velcro that's on the pad. Can you guys see that? Okay. Also on the recap as well. Okay. These these pads come with a recap, but we actually they actually make another another model called the V Turtle, again from 187. It's a higher abrasion more durable plastic that we get. These are roughly about 30 bucks a set, and that's on top of the $110 pads. Now, yes, the price is a little bit high, but when you start sliding and you're using this stuff and, you, and you're feeling a difference with your knees, you're gonna be like, okay, it's worth the money, you know? Not to mention they'll last a good long time. I mean, these pads are pretty new, but if you take care of them and you're, you're sliding on a regular basis, they could last 10, 15 years. I just like to get as much as I can out of my gear. So that's why I still got those old Smith pads. Um, another, another huge factor to save your knees is a neoprene gasket. These, these are from Smith, okay? It's got a horseshoe pad in here like this. And it also has, I don't know if you guys can see it in the back, but it's got this spandex piece in the back to 
reduced pinching in the back of the leg. How many here that slide that have that problem? Pinching, right? How many here that slide? <laughs> How many here that slide don't use gas? You're laughing, but it's true. Okay, those of you that just raise your hand with that, I'll explain to you why that's a bad idea. Okay, this is obviously it's a strong opinion on my part, but considering how old I am, I'm still sliding at a level I do. This is a big reason why. Not to mention the other training I do. These help absorb impact and keep your knee stabilized every time you slide. This is going to reduce the long-term injuries for you guys. So if you want to continue to slide, especially you young guys, I mean, some of you guys are 18, how old are you? 19, so you guys are young, right? You're sliding now. By the time you're about 23, 24, you're gonna start feeling long-term knee pain, okay? I've had knee surgery before, but because I use these, I don't have any issues. That's part of it. This brand is Smith. So it's uh, Smith Scabs. Also afterwards, you guys, we'll, we will have a and a if there's something we didn't get to. I can talk to you guys some more right outside after the panel, okay? So those are two key components, the pads and the um, gaskets, okay? Now obviously this is just a crash course for you guys so you can get the insight, you know, but afterwards we can give you some uh, web information and whatnot. So from there, we're gonna go to the next important part, the footwear. Now, the footwear is something that everybody's gonna choose to their comfort level. The one type of shoe I do not recommend, which a lot of people use, and that's okay because it's comfortable for them, are Converse. Am I right? How many here use Converse? I know almost my whole team does. So, okay. Now here's the reason why. Zero support in the foot, zero ankle support. Okay? Not to mention, they're not very durable. I mean, how many, how many of you here use Converse and are done after a season? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See? Right? <laughs> Here's the thing, I'm gonna, we have a bunch of different pairs of shoes up here that are options that are better that you could use for support and durability. Um, I'm going to start with this beater right here. Now, this shoe, how old is this shoe, Tyler? Uh, since 2019. Okay, so this shoe is since 2019, but you can see the damage, right? And this is, this is something that's actually better than a Converse shoe. So, and, and I know he's been using these longer than he should. <laughs> he's even stated that. So, and this is, this is a, a non-grip shoe, you know, but uh, and that's why he got it, right? That's why he got it? Yeah. Non-grip shoe, you put a steel toe on it. You know, but that's why he got it, so. Love you, Creep. What? So I love you, Creep. <laughs> Next one. A leather high top. This is, good. this is a good alternative, too. It's a Vans shoe. These are more durable than uh, Converse, more support. But what you can do is put in a better insole. You know, because I mean, we all know Vans, a lot of Vans just have that flat bottom, right? You put in a good quality insole, whether it's like the Vans skate insole, the pop fish, or a good gel insole, that's gonna help tremendously, tremendously. Next shoe, these next two, these are the two that I, I prefer, that I use over time, I mean, I've used boots, tennis shoes, everything. These are the ones I, I lean to. A turf shoe. This is an old school New Balance turf shoe. This one's destroyed, but can you guys in, can you guys in the back see the tread on the bottom? Yeah. Okay, so this I use these as a, as, a, as a test dummy pair of shoes years ago, and after two slides, I'm like, I was sold on them. And the reason why is because with these turf cleats here, when you hit the ground and go to stand up, they actually flex and they help you stop, which is crazy, right? Not to mention these things are super durable. I, I got scored with these and I pawned them across for 15 bucks. <laughs> you know? What's that? I said, let's go. I, you, gotta, you gotta shop on your own, kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but you know, as, as, in, as in the other shoe, they're gonna come apart. Like this one, it's coming apart here and the heel is separating. You know, so these are, these are toast. You know, and this, these are when I was sliding 100% full time as talent every year. So now what I do is when I do all my training clinics, whenever I train people, this is an act, I use an actual wrestling shoe. This is the first kind of shoe I ever slid in. And that was a full-time run, that was a big mistake. But this shoe is super comfortable, it feels like a booty on your foot, obviously it's a wrestling shoe. It's low profile, and the steel toe fits on there almost perfectly. You know, so. I would not recommend these though for you guys if you guys are sliding full-time as talent, because you'll destroy these inside of three weeks, guaranteed. 
you know, especially with the laces, you burn through them and then you're kind of screwed, right? So don't mind the yellow either, I had to paint them because they were cheaper. <laughs> Okay, next thing, gloves. Lots of variations of gloves, right? How many here use like standard construction gloves from like Home Depot, Milwaukee? Super comfortable, lightweight, right? Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go over that and I'm gonna show you other items that are a little heavier, a little bulkier, but super durable and depending on what your costume is, how you wanna look, you can use that, but it'll be like you're doing curls all night, okay? So, uh, you guys want to see the, the big Mongo heavy one first? Yeah. Okay, so this, this one is used by one of my guys on the team. He uses a welder's glove with the big square steel plates. Yeah, that guy right there. I don't care about you. This is what his glove looks like on the top. Okay? This is what it looks like on the sliding surface. Yeah, Spaz uses these too. Kind of ridiculous, right? But I get it. So this, this glove here, I'm holding it, it weighs about three, maybe four pounds. So imagine having these on all night, you know, three to four pounds on each hand. So, but you know what, if this is something you want to do for the look or whatever, and you don't mind the weight, that's cool. But I will tell you, and probably in the beginning he'll tell you too, like you get super fatigued at the end of a night with these. And that doesn't help, like your shoulders will start hurting. Stuff like that. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to work my way from the big bulky down, okay? So the next one is a, similar to that, it's a regular contractor's glove with a steel plate on it. These are a lot lighter and, heavy, and not, as, you know, not as heavy and more breathable, but again, it's heavier, you got more sliding surface, just no dexterity, okay? And that's a lot of things, like for me, I love being able to have slider gloves on it. And, pick up stuff off the floor without having to do, you know, do this. <laughs> and actually pick it up, you know. I know I'm going fast, you guys, but we don't have a whole lot of time. I just want to give you guys some insight. Um, the next one, there's two types, okay? There's fingerless with a puck, with a flint, which, you know, I, I know a lot of people that use these, it scares the hell out of me to have exposed fingers, honestly, because let me show you guys something. I don't, how many of you guys here were in the season screamings panel? Anybody? Okay, so you saw the picture of my finger, right? Yeah. I'm gonna show the rest of you guys. This is what happens when you get stepped on by a guest. Ew. I know, right? Ouch. So this is, I mean, this that was with a glove that had a steel piece on the finger, but this scares me, but I don't take it away from anybody that wants to do it, okay? This one has flint on it, so you get some spark. Here's one with fingers. With the puck, no flints. Okay? So there's a lot of options for you guys. You know, I mean, this one even has, these both have the rubber knuckles on them, which is a good thing to have too, you know? Have a little extra protection. And the next one is the one I use that's super lightweight, lots of flexibility, is a standard glove, a Milwaukee glove from Home Depot with washers and wire conduit. These are, these are old, but they, they, a set of gloves now last me about six, seven years. But I mean, look at, you can totally fold it up. I can actually close my hand and like I said, I can pick up stuff. Okay, those are, those are the options you have. Um, with the washers, they tend to stick out a little bit like, like the, uh, the plates. But what I did is I went something a little bit further and I actually took the washers and bent them to the shape of my hand in a vise and banged on them with a hammer. I don't know if you guys can, can you guys see this spot right here? Yeah. That actually bends down the side of my hand so it lays flatter. And it actually creates a better sliding surface. We have got, especially on um, really rough ground, less less corners to catch on something. You know what I mean? And this is something that is an option, but it's highly recommended because it reduces pain on your hands. An underglove. Now these you can buy on uh, Amazon. This glove is spandex on the top, but look at the palm. It's gel padding. This almost completely reduces impact. I mean, you'll feel a little bit still because there's no way around that, but you're not gonna be hurting at the end of the night when you hit your hands really hard because this absorbs and disperses everything. And because there's Hispanics on the top, one of my guys found these online. I can't take credit for that. I asked him and I, I ordered them, but there's no bulk. So you can wear, you can wear a regular size glove and wear these underneath and you're good. So, um, I know it's a crash course, like I said, but 
Now I'm going to send it off to a couple of my guys here to talk about why they use their equipment. Um, the first one I'll introduce you to is Tyler Latshaw. So talk about that. So I'm one of those crazy people who uses fingerless. Um, uh, the reason I do that is I used to use the fold gloves with the metal fingertips and everything. It all changed when I broke my hand when a, my metal fingertips hit a hole in the concrete. Black top, and it broke my hand. I had uh, the support of the metal shoved it all up, like all the force into my hand and I broke my hand. So now I go fingerless uh, for also the dexterity of like holding props or whatever uh, while scary. Um, I have pucks. Um, you can see these are longboard pucks. This is what happens when there's a lot of pressure on the belt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pull it off. But um, these are longboard pucks. They're really thick. And that thickness is enough to keep my fingers off the ground. Um, these ones have flint, and I also have one of the top ones. Uh, these, these uh, Amazon, uh, these ones make them a lot of sparks. Uh, if you like sparks. Um, another piece of equipment I use uh, for protection and to save my shoes a little bit too are leather gaiters or spats. Um, these can be found online as well. Uh, they're thick leather. Uh, they provide support for my ankles and also protection over my shoe. Um, and this is my shoe. <laughs> my beat up old shoe. Uh, I got non slip from Walmart. Uh, the traction uh, actually helps a lot for stopping. Um, for can't see but because it's taped over and the tape is kind of like melted but I have zip ties that hold it together um, so it stays on my foot taped over top so to also protect the zip ties from breaking mid uh, run or mid uh, shift um, I also don't have them I know a lot of people have them like go all the way up to the top I don't do that so that I can just easily slip these on and off but they won't fall off my feet while I'm straight. And then also the, the spats kind of help protect against that too. Um, as far as pads, I currently use the 187s. Uh, I like them for like the way I slide. It is uh, I come down with a lot of force, uh, so the padding behind the knee and stuff like really I like that for protecting my knee. Um, also for like doing jumps and certain tricks, like these come in, like handy for saving. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to pass it off to Jasper right now for so he can talk about. Um, so you saw this one earlier. This is my glove. Um, so yes, with this, you're not going to be having a lot of dexterity. But for me, because I am a heavy hitter, when I come down, I'm a heavy slider. I like this. This gives me extra protection for my hands, and it gives me that ability to just go. I used to have washers, um, but the issue I found is I would get caught, and it wasn't enough support for my palms. I got little baby hands. So I need that support. Um, as you can see, though, I have some conduits as well. Um, if you can see here, I've been hitting it here, mainly. Um, these gloves are old, though. I've had these for four years. So this is what a glove looks like after four years. Um, but, um, I have since switched from Converse, everyone. Um, this is my shoe. It's a leather band. I highly suggest using high tops. It's going to give you that ankle support. If you slide wrong and you go like this, you know, at least you're not tearing up the side. Obviously, I've got the steel toe here. I only use two zip ties because I don't like them super tight. Um, I feel like when they're super tight, I can't move as well. Um, so I just have the two. And I got lucky there's a zipper on the back, so I can be lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the pads. I have super bad knees, especially my left one. Um, so I need as much support as I can get, especially because I'm starting to go into trick sliding. And doing those jumps and hitting the ground is a lot of pressure on my knees. So I use 187s. They're bulky, again, so like when you're walking around, you kind of have to waddle. But for me, it's been saving my knees since I've been sliding, and I'm going to keep using them. Um, Got to get a pair of gaskets as well. Just, <laughs> not to save my knees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And also, um, because my, one more thing about these, um, because the plate, if you slam a bunch of times, you're gonna get bruising here. I highly suggest either the gloves or wraps. Wraps aren't the best though, so the gloves would probably be a better option. Yeah, that's how I got for you. <laughs> okay, this next phase here, I want to go into components, but one thing I do want to stress on you guys, like if you guys are beginning sliding, I really want to stress that if you guys want to do this long term, don't go straight to tricks. Learn the fundamentals first and the basics, and then build on that. Okay. You gotta learn to crawl before you can walk, walk before you can run. That's how life goes, that's how this goes too. I've seen way too many people go out there and go straight from sliding, barely knowing how to stop, to doing tricks, and they're hurting themselves inside of night. You know, a couple hours and they're, they're toast for a few weeks and they've injured themselves, okay? Um, one thing I did forget to mention too, but it's sensitive the components. Proper socks is huge too. What I use, I actually found a uh, company years ago it does toe socks. I know a lot of people already have heard that before, but it's a company called Injinji. I wear thin sport toe socks and a regular athletic sock over that, so there's no real movement of my foot inside the shoe, no blister. I haven't had a blister since year one of sliding. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so, okay, now I'm gonna go a little bit more into the, the, the build aspect of it with the components we you use to keep everything together, okay? Um, and, and some other stuff that you can buy. Um, I'm going to start out with uh, recaps first. Uh, a lot, like I said, a lot of recaps, they come with double stick tape, and you get the Velcro and whatnot, you put that on the back. This brand right here, this isn't Smith or 187, this is a company called Burley. These guys, this is their immortal cap version. This actually is made out of a strong, durable, high, high uh, abrasive material too, so these last a pretty long time. Initially though, when you slide with these, they're gonna feel kind of slow until you get the first layer through. We were just having this conversation the other day because he was testing a new set. And once he got through that first layer, way faster. So just kind of keep that in mind if you guys get these. These run about 30 bucks a set. They're in Canada, so it runs about 10 days to get to the States. You know, out here. You know what I mean? Um, Velcro. Pretty simple, you can go to Home Depot or Walmart. Two inch wide industrial strength, sticky back. Okay, this is the easiest thing for you to do to attach anything you need. I've attached recaps. I actually uh, built some um, slide plates for the outside of my pants right underneath my recap because I used to burn through the bottom of my pants. Put a piece of plastic under there with this on the back, they'll grow on the pants, you're good to go. You can take them off and throw your pants in the washer. So that was something I had to do because I was tired of putting through my jeans. I was going through two pairs of jeans a season. And then I found this, I started doing this and it was golden. Another thing to help abrasion, like I'll show you real quick. See this shiny part right here? This is, this is uh, PVC pipe glue called ABS glue. This is a very, very quick solution to any kind of abrasion. I actually had a hole here. So I put a piece of leather underneath it and then I put ABS glue over it. But say you're working a night of hot, you see, oh, I got a bit of abrasion there. You can go on break, put a couple of layers on, it'll dry in like 15, 20 minutes. Put it in front of a fan and you're golden. That acts as a layer of plastic. So that'll help, you know, longevity of the pads. Comes in a container like this. This bottle right here, I remember I used to get it for like two or three bucks. It's about $8 now. <laughs> you know, but this, this can't, this can will last you a couple years if you're not burning through your pads really heavy. Home Depot, Lowe's, anything like that. General hardware store. Don't mind this tape when I put that on there because I couldn't open the cap without it. <laughs> so it has a little bit of grip. Another, another important item. E6000. Okay. <laughs> Look at everybody's like, yay. So this glue, in 95, I found this on a fluke. I'm not even kidding you. I walked, in, I walked into a uh, craft store and I'm like, I need something that holds on steel toes besides hot glue because hot glue, you hit the ground once. Since it's not pliable, it cracks and there goes the, hot, the steel toe, right? It's kind of funny though when you go to slide and you're clink, 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 clink. <laughs> you know? uh, the downside of this stuff, for full cure, 72 hours. It can be dry and ready to use in 12, but if you have time, say you're building 
before you go into your, your event to start, I would use I would start building with this stuff at least a week prior, you know, so that you get it all put together and you let it dry, just to be on the safe side. And the instructions on here are pretty self-explanatory. This this will glue steel to cement, you know, and that's kind of how, how we do it. Steel to leather or, or fabric is, you know, one of those things. What? Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Obviously a steel toe, right? So here's the kicker. These are hot, hard to find locally. Okay. Um, this I actually bought a pair of shoes from Walmart for 30 bucks and I cut these out. That's why there's no scratching on it yet. Um, and there's usually a lip on it too. But uh, my roommate works for a aerospace company, so he I gave them to him and he cut the lip off. I hate that lip. You know, <laughs> some people like it. I hate it. So this is this is obviously keep the phone because it's gonna save your toes. This is another thing I found out on the flute too. Honestly, like some of the guys were, were using plumber's tape and plastic, and I was using duct tape at the time. And I needed something that was more durable. So I asked my dad, hey, you got a pair of old steel toe boots? And he was like, yeah, I said, I want them. And he's like, what are you gonna do? And I showed him. He thought I lost my mind. <laughs> he really did. But once I glued it on, I used hot glue, like I said, so the first slot I hit, it fell off, and that's what spawned me to find some other kind of adhesive that worked. And E6000 has been the best for me. Um, I know household goop works well. Um, some of you may think Gorilla Glue. That's a bad recommendation, because what happens is when glue, Gorilla Glue dries, it expands. You don't want that to happen. You want it to stay where it's at. So um, E6000, the only problem with that is it's self-leveling, and what I mean by that is like if you put it at an angle and you tilt it in a manner to where it has a lower point to run to, that's where it'll go. So you have to glue it up and kind of prop it up at an angle. Let it get tacky before you put it together, but prop it up at an angle so it dries where you want it to. You know, it's kind of a pain, I know, but that's how it works. Um, so fingertips, the wire conduit. So I, I've got a lot of questions. I've gotten a lot of questions about this. These were introduced to me by one of the guys I started sliding with. So it's a it's a 90 degree wire connector, right? It's a dry wire connector. These come in different sizes. This is a half inch. This is usually the good size for anybody using contractor glove. Not the welder. The welder gloves are what one inch that you use. So okay, yeah. So you use this. You don't need this part. Go this way. This is the part you need. Okay. See how it fits my finger? You guys see that? Yeah. Perfect, right? So, and this is what you do one step further. This is when it comes out of the package. This is what you finish with. What's missing? Tabs. Tabs, right? You can either cut them right here below this section, like this, or you can just take a pair of flat nose pliers and rock it off until it snaps off. It's, this isn't super strong metal. So it'll snap right off and you just file the edges down so there's nothing sharp. Some people like to keep those there as a support. For me, it jams the hell out of my fingers when I hit the ground. And this too, they keep pointing out like that's, honestly, that's just not safe. You know what I mean? And um, this, is a, this is a typical wash of a Home Depot. You, know, you can buy these, I think, for like 15 cents or 20 cents a piece. This is, these are the ones I use. I still like them. I mean, I, I always try to experiment with different product, but right now these, are, these tend to be the best. Um, I, I know cold rolled steel works good too. Like if you, if you guys, are any of you guys in here are fabricators, you guys can make stuff based off of just general information, you know, and shapes and stuff. Or use like the wire conduit to show what the, uh, what the shape is, you know? I mean, I know there's people out there who made molds. You know, and they just take a press to it. It doesn't always work, but you know what I mean? So, um, that is pretty much all the stuff we have up here for you guys, which is great because it'll be, it gives us more time to ask questions. Um, so if you guys have questions, what, what, what's the time we have right now? Okay, so we're way ahead of schedule. I wanted to give you guys a crash course, but now I want to open up the, the open it up to you guys if there's, a question you have on a specific piece of equipment, or if you're talking about you're looking into changing into something else, you know that's that's what we're here for. Yes. Um, for the fingertips, what if you have like a really 
So I um, I typically do a size up for my gloves if I know I have nails all the time. So typically I wear a small. Those gloves I have are medium. That gives me a little extra room for my nail. Um, it's gonna feel a little weird when you're sliding. Um, just be careful. But if you do a size up, you'll have that extra space for your nail, depending how long you have them. I wouldn't suggest super long, long nails for sliding, but like, what do you, that's fine. Yeah, you'll be fine with that. I also have a small-handed child. <laughs> so like extra, extra small gloves? <laughs> you know what does help with that too, is if you do wear an under glove, you could realistically go up a size too. So you could, it'll take up some space and it'll give your feet a little bit more, a little more room. I saw someone else in the question. Way in the back. Uh, one question I had is because I use like kind of like cheap, cheaper knee pads and they slide on me all the time. Do you guys do anything to like do the best suggestion I've done is like duct tape you, uh, for the like more expensive knee pads? Do they stay in one place when you slide? They do. The more expensive, the question was cheaper knee pads, they move around. What do, what do we suggest? Upgrade. One, <laughs> it's going to be worth it, you know, because and two, it's going to hold in place better. The pads we use, as you saw, they have the power strap on the top and the bottom on top of the dog ears. That'll help. Uh, also, get, get gaskets. I, I can't stress that enough because it's gonna save you long term. You know, that way, if you have the right equipment on top of the training properly, you'll be able to slide until you wanna stop and not because you got injured, <laughs> right? Because that kind of sucks, you get injured, then you're laid up for weeks and you're like, I wanna go slide, but you can't. You know, everybody's been there. So, anybody else have a question? Yes. Um, I'm about to be making my new gear. Mm -hmm. um, what do you suggest by putting the fingers in the bottoms of the, the steel toe top? So, question was, he's making new gear and for the steel toes cutting and the conduit cutting. For this, you can use a hacksaw. Mm -hmm. You just cut right down here. Steel toes, it's a little bit different because it's a hard material, right? If you got somebody that can put it on a bandsaw or something like that, they can trim it off. Uh, but every time you cut something, you got to make sure the edges are yes. the edges. Hi, Ed. <laughs> the edges are rounded out. You know what I mean? So there's no danger to you or a guest. You know. So the, the, if you don't if you don't mind the lip on the bottom, you can leave it on there. Well, I run converts, so I'm like, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people think it, it, they like it better because it secures the steel toe better. I'm just not a fan of the clip clop. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> yeah. White face, green hair guy. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen the Converse, the new All Star ones that they released? They're I have. Like padded by the ankle. I have. The new All Stars, they're a little bit more padded, gives yeah. you more support in the ankle. Even with the upgraded insole, it's still not enough. Really? Yeah. But like I said, if you guys choose to use Converse, have at it. You know, I'm just letting you know that if you do, there's going to be you're going to feel a little bit more pain. You know, but you get, and ultimately. With especially the shoes, you have to find something that works best for you. You know, I don't say use this because I say so. I'm just giving you guys recommendations what's best and what's going to cause it's going to be better long term for you. Because yeah. anything's going to wear out, but I'll tell you, Converse will wear out much quicker, way quicker. Yes. So um, you put metal on the primary points of contact, right? Yes. Have you experimented with other points of contact, like sliding on your hips, sliding on? You know, putting metal on different parts of your body to experiment with that slide. Physically, I haven't, but I have friends that have, like a buddy of mine. This was hilarious too when I first saw him do it. He was he put plastic, you know, uh, cap, um, elbow pads. I can't even talk right now. Elbow pads on. He's like, dude, watch this. I'm standing in the corner. He runs and slides, and then all of a sudden you see him going like this. <laughs> so he's sliding on his elbow and is on his knee. So it worked for him. He only did it a few nights, but it worked for him. Me physically, I haven't done that, you know. But that's a good question. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you think about it. Um, I know some people have done uh, a slide on the butt, you know, on the on the on the slick floor like inside the show. And that floor is that floor is super quick. I, I have thought about putting plastic on my butt cheeks, <laughs> just to see what that would do. But I, I just that was a thought. Gone. <laughs> you know, yeah, gone. Yeah, we're on each side. <laughs> you know, um, I wish I would have brought. I didn't think about it, but I wish I would have brought the pieces that I had for my shins right below my knee pad. It's just all I did was I got a um, like about a four inch round plumber's pipe or uh, connector pipe. I cut it in half this way, and I took each side and cut it in quarters. So the piece is about this big, 
and it's got a, a little bit of a, a round shape to it, right? And that shapes the bottom of your leg right here, like where your pad is. You Velcro, you Velcro that to your pants, and the top, I used to do it right here too. You're wearing the plastic and you're not burning through your jeans, or pants, or your shin if, you're, if you don't wear pants. Because some people wear shorts, you know. Question? Yes. Um, so you, you talk a lot about um, quality in your equipment. Mm -hmm. So if you invest in like a really good pair of shoes, knee pads, recaps, and like you build out a really good set of gloves, presumably how long would a really good invested set uh, well, last you? Depending on how aggressive you are in your equipment, which Jan, you know how so, a, a range of people slide, some people are super light. If you're an aggressive slider, you can anticipate your gear will last about three years, depending on how heavy. Your pads will last longer, but your shoes, your gloves, maybe three years. If you're a slider that's a little bit lighter, like I was a slider that was a little bit lighter on my gear. I hammered the hell out of it, but I was lighter on it. So I could stretch components to about six, seven years. You know, even like the metal, depending on how heavy you are on your hands, especially, you know, sometimes the washers, like these washers that I have here, Actually, these are the second pair of gloves these have been on, so these washers here are about eight years old. You know what I mean? So, but overall, you asked about price-wise, right? Right. Yeah, price-wise, you're looking at a few hundred bucks, honestly. It's an investment, but if it's something you want to do, I mean, we all know that sliding is not a normal thing, right? It's based in the hot world. That's where it was created not. You know, now it's global, which is freaking awesome in my opinion. Um, but... With that, you gotta have the proper protection. And since nothing is built specifically for our needs, and I'll say yet, because I know there's things out there that are being built, we have to we have to make adjustments to make things work for us. Question. Because I use fingerless, and then I wear a regular glove, uh, cut that up, and I wear a insole underneath, and then with the glove on the top. Is that recommendable at all? It's like, it's like a gel insole type? Yeah, it's a gel insole. Yeah, if that works for you, that's great. The only thing is when you glue that on there, it creates a little bit of bulk. Like, the, the, here's the thing, this glove, this glove I bought, I got two pairs for like 30 bucks. And with these gloves, this is, it's got gel with no bulk, so it's a good alternative. That's what you put on, underneath before the glove. Correct? Yeah, this is your base glove. That's this goes under your slider glove. Got it. So, yeah, dude, I know how you slide, so these would be great for you. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, I barely slide, so. But when you hit your hands, I've seen you do it. These would be great to reduce that impact. Correct. So, back there. Well, I know how, how horrible your guys' ground is. By the way, that's the Northwest Possessed team out of Seattle. <laughs> Their founder is a, is a longtime friend of ours, and he, his roots are out of Dark Harbor, too. So, um, here's the thing. You're, I know your ground is terrible. You guys have gone the right route. You guys got those clear recaps. Um, those will help. The problem is the sealer itself, the only way you can really get a ground that you need is the polished concrete. Um, like the rink that we slide out here locally in Garden Grove, that's a polished concrete because it used to be an old um, roller hockey rink. Um, even if it's cement, it looks smooth, it's textured, that can chew your pads up. If you can get into a parking lot that's got, it's asphalt, but it's got that, that coating over it, Looks are deceiving because there's a place I slid at a couple of months ago that I thought was going to be rough. I hit the ground and it was so fast. Some of the fastest ground I ever slid on, minus the rink. So it's just going to vary. I, I feel for you guys because I've seen some of the stuff you guys slide on. You know, and I've seen your video clips and it's horrible. We're replacing gear every season. So when you say you, your gear lasts three years, and like. Yeah. Well, here's the thing too. Since how long have you guys been sliding? Total. Okay, six years, and I think you're still trying to feel out how your sliding, your body position is, right? Once you figure that out, and that's, that's going to be something un unconscious that's going to click, that will change the wear patterns on your gear. Guaranteed. I used to, I used to slide differently, too. I had worse wear patterns, now I have less. So, and, and they're in different locations, too. Question in the back. Yeah, the current 
industry standard of sliding gear that you're presenting here has been developed over many years of like trial and error and trying this, trying that, seeing what works. What do you predict or what do you foresee for, for the future of sliding gear and how it may and can evolve? Well, it's hard to say how the evolution is going to go, um, but I know like every year or two, sometimes three, I see something new that comes out. Um, and that somebody else brings to the table, it's like, oh, I want to try that. You know? Um, knee pads, that needs, I mean, the pads we use are strictly designed for skate. Because there's nothing built for, for our specialty, this is what we resort to. You know? Sometime probably in the next, I'd say, handful of years, maybe three to three or four years or less, I'm sure there's going to be somebody out there that puts something together that is developed for us, but here, you know, but still be able to be used for other things. You know, I mean, we use these because they're they're protective. I mean, I've seen guys use contractor knee pads, which is insane. But you know what? If it works for them, great. Catch your gear, huh? Catch your gear, like Yeah, catch your gear too. That's crazy. That reminds me of a story. I want to tell you guys a little bit of a story about it. Back in the 90s, there was this one guy that tried to really evolve sliding, right? He wore catcher gear. He decided to put skateboard trucks on there with wheels. And that lasted all about two tries and he was done because he couldn't stop. So that makes no sense, right? So even though if you think about it, the art of sliding has really evolved, it's still kind of in the infant stages, right? You know, I mean, there's a lot of changes that have been made, but it's still going to evolve. I think there's way more out there, way more things out there to change. Uh, have you personally tried, like, the, for the gloves, like, the, the tap shoes, because it has a nice coverage of, like, the palm? I have not personally, but I have friends that have. Do you want to chime in on that? Since I, you I, them? I mean, who do you ask? Um, tap shoes get about a size a couple size smaller just so it about reaches this part of your hand right under where your palm is mm -hmm. so you can put that here that'll cover pretty much this entire spot the smoothness or the like the curvature of the actual tap shoe especially the toe part really helps kind of go over things the only thing is the metal is very thin if you really want those to last long i would put maybe like a little piece of leather right before you glue everything on and it should give you that, that little bit of cushion and then I put two washers here or you can get one step even further get a little kids tap shoe use a little heel that fits perfectly right there and you're able to you're still able to close your hands and, and yeah. go like this and flex them but I tap shoes yes like weight too yeah. downside is like you're saying is the fact that they're a lighter material, they're softer, so they'll burn quicker. It's always good to use some kind of a hardened metal. How do you how do you tear apart the tap shoes? Like, what is your process? I, aren't those screwed in? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was wondering. If you go to Opera, if you go to what Opera, do you, do? you can find some that have screws yeah. on the toes. Unscrew that, and it, it just falls out. Oh my out. gosh, it sounds magical. So it's like the wire con way. Yeah. Yeah. Unscrew it, it falls apart. Yeah. And then you know. Yeah, that's a good question. I didn't think anyone was going to ask that question about the taps. You know what else? Uh, over there. Uh, just random, you can buy loose taps. Yeah. There you go. You can See? Amazon, yeah. You Look at that. You guys are getting knowledge from other people in this panel, too. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. Shared knowledge. Question. Yeah. I was asking uh, somebody else's first time sliding or you know, <laughs> 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 Is that a really small slider yet? Somewhere on the right now. As far as kind of the surface, not going to be a residential driveway. Residential driveway. Anything I should tell them is, is they're starting to try to experiment and learn. Two things. One, wax. That'll help. You just put wax on the pads. Okay. But if you want wax deposited on your concrete, okay. that's a bummer. Okay, so if you don't care, that's fine too. Slide with the grain. Um, like, <coughs> test that first, and this is how I always do everything with new ground. I'll check the grain, slide with it first, and then slide against to see which is faster. Usually on a driveway because it's, it's uh, concrete that's kind of dragged out downhill so the water runs down, right? You slide with that grain and it should be better because there's less friction there. Uh, I just wanted to uh, get your opinion on, because I used it before by a good friend of mine. Um, what's your opinions on using fingerless gloves for fitness. It's fitness gloves. It's up to you. Like I said, like Tyler uses them. He likes them. 
If you want to use them, 100%. But if you're using like a workout fingerless glove, I mean, I, I think you already know those are going to be destroyed quick. Because right. they're not very thick. Yeah. But no, if that's something that you're comfortable with, have at it. Yep. Just, just understand that there could be a possibility where you chew up your fingers. Yeah, I know. A little bit. Anybody else with a question? Yeah. Question? Question? No? Okay, so we're ahead of schedule, but if you guys want to come up and take a look at the gear we have laid out here, you can get a better eyeball on it because some of you may not be able to see it. Um, if you have any questions for us, you can, you can do that here. Grab a business card for me if you want to email me later for more questions, 100%. So, last chance, any questions? Everybody's good? Good, okay, if you guys want to come up here and check it out, you can see all the different variations we've got.